All right, so today I'm gonna to try and help you all out on saving some time and money because it's easy to waste a whole lot of both looking at and eventually buying one or two or three of the wrong holster. So today we're gonna to try and go over what to look for, the styles of holsters, to carry all this good stuff to help you guys get what you need and not waste money or time. And for the purposes of today's video, we're specifically gonna be talking about concealed carry EDC style holsters. Now, duty style holsters, retention holsters are their own animal, they're their own price point, and they really deserve their own video. So we're gonna concentrate on concealed carry stuff in multiple different styles and positions today. And anytime you're buying a holster, much like anything else in this world, remember, good isn't cheap, and cheap generally isn't good. And I know that's a generality, but just think about it. These things are not cheap to make, it takes a lot of time to make them, so don't think that you're gonna get tier one, T-Rex, Gerber, Black Arc, style of quality, finish work, and all that good stuff that goes into it for $35 Amazon prices. It's just not gonna happen. And before we get into the holsters, a huge shout out to Flatline Fiber. They make all of your soft goods for your hard lifestyle, whether you're looking for slings, ear pro wraps, brace straps, or even these cool new dump pouches. They recently sent us several of these items out to do giveaways for you guys here on the channel. So go over to flatlinefibercode.com and let me know what your favorite color pattern was because they have a couple new ones or what your favorite item was. Don't have to buy anything. Leave me a comment down below on what it is and I'll pick one of the comments down there as a winner. So keep an eye out for that. Really cool dump pouches. They're what I use uh, personally and it's flatlinefibercode.com. All right, on with the holster. So the first thing you're gonna need to figure out is how do you want to carry? Do you want to carry inside the waistband, outside the waistband? Do you want an inside the waistband with a mag caddy on it? You really got to determine which style is going to fit your lifestyle and your body type the best. Inside of that, you're also going to have to determine where you want to carry. Do you want to carry appendix? Do you want to carry strong side three o'clock? Do you want to carry a little bit further back? There are advantages and disadvantages to each type of that, which we will go over to give you a little bit better of an understanding. All right, a couple other things, not to break any of you Miami Vice lovers' hearts out there, we're not going to talk about today are going to be things like the Jackass Rig or the Small of the Back. Yes, Jackass Rig is an actual holster style because they're generally not the safest and they're pretty slow and ineffective to draw from. So sorry to break you 80s fans, lovers' hearts out there, we're not going to be talking about those. The second thing you need to determine is what material do you want or do you want a mix of materials? Do you want Kydex, also known as plastic? Uh, do you want leather or do you want a hybrid, which is Kydex and leather, trying to give you the best of both worlds? And there are advantages and disadvantages to both of those. Leather is generally a little bit more comfortable and forgiving as you wear it around and move throughout the day. However, it's generally going to need servicing, replacing more often. And it's considered by some not the safest material because it can lose its form over time, work its way into the trigger guard, things like that. So feel free to flamethrow each other in the comments on that one and battle it out. And the third thing you really need to nail down is the style of holster. Do you want pistol only? Do you want pistol and a light? Do you want pistol and a light and a mag caddy? And there's a lot of good options out there for all of those. But remember, if you get one like the T-Rex, the sidecar, or the Gerber sidekick, or that black arc that I just showed you, you're adding more bulk. It's gonna be a little less comfortable, and you need to determine if it's gonna work with your body type, especially if it's appendix right in the front. And we're gonna focus on each one of those today to give you guys a really good idea of the options. So strong side out the waistband on the three o'clock and inside the waistband that can be worn appendix or three o'clock and that sidecar or sidekick style magazine caddy design that's gonna be worn directly on the front on the appendix side. And once we've got through all that, then I'll go over what to look for as far as options, quality, and all the finish work details you're gonna to wanna to look for to make sure you get the most holster for your money. All right, so starting off with the strong side, three o'clock position on the belt. A lot of different options out there for this stuff. And there's generally gonna be two different kind of retention styles you're gonna have for your belt line here. You're either gonna have a paddle or you're gonna have belt slides or belt loops. And they're just like what they sound like. You're gonna route your belt through those and that's gonna be very secure. Keep it on your body at all times. And it's gonna be a little bit more time consuming to take on and take off. Now, conversely, you have the paddle design, which is generally a larger piece of polymer, plastic, or even Kydex that's going to fit underneath your belt or inside your waistband of your pants. And it's gonna really gonna have some hooks sometimes or something on there to kind of retain should anybody pull on it or should you accidentally sit and knock it on something. And that's gonna keep it in there generally fairly well. 
Uh, paddle designs are a lot easier to get off and on. They're easy to swap out quickly, but they're not quite as secure as a true belt slide style holster. Now, when picking out a holster for that strong side carry, you're gonna want the most minimal and sleek design you can get because you're adding width to your body already. And a bulkier holster, something like a Safariland ALS, is just not gonna be conducive to trying to conceal carry unless you're wearing a really big, thick Stay Puft Marshmallow Man style jacket. So if you are gonna go with a strong side belt loop style holster like that or a paddle design, look for the most minimal flat pancake style design you can find. Now this style of carry is generally considered the safest because at no point in time is that muzzle really ever going to flag or cover any part of your body or anybody else's body unless you're rolling around on the ground or something weird is going on. Even when you're in the seated position, generally that muzzle is not gonna be pointed at anything that it shouldn't be. And that's generally why people consider that strong side position to be the safest because that muzzle is not going to cover or flag anything that it shouldn't unless you want it to. Now, when it comes to inside the waistband, some of these inside the waistband holsters can be worn in the appendix and on the strong side, and even a little bit further back, depending on their design. Ones we're gonna look at today are gonna to be a hidden hybrid, which is that leather Kydex combo, and also an LAS concealment Seiya. These are gonna be two really good examples of ones that you can wear in the appendix or wear on that strong side. They're generally gonna have a slightly curved or completely closed off bottom. And that's because if you're using this or training with this out on the range, that muzzle is going to be very hot at some point. And you don't want that to touch your skin or any clothing underneath there that could melt or burn or fray or anything like that. So it's generally gonna have a pretty similar design. There are ones that offer completely open bottom so you can carry multiple size pistols in there. And I generally prefer those, but if you're concerned about heat or anything like that, a closed off one is also going to protect you from the heat of that muzzle. Now these will come in single clip, double clip, utility clip, metal clip, plastic clip. There are tons of different things you can get as far as it comes to options to retain this in there. And those are gonna give you different levels of retention and security depending on what you're gonna look for. Now I generally prefer the two smaller clips as compared to the one larger clip because I just found them to hold on to the belt a little bit better. Now in a position like this, this is where that leather is going to be quite a bit more comfortable up against your body than hard kydex. But like I said, you also need to remember, it's gonna need more maintenance, it's gonna need replacing more often, and you're definitely gonna to have to ensure at all times that that leather has not deformed anywhere around there, especially on that trigger guard. And a lot of times holsters that are meant to be carried like this are gonna have some form of concealment claw or concealment wedge that you can add on or that is built into the holster to kind of help keep the grip of that pistol from printing. And you'll see that on most of the nicer holsters out there. All right, so the appendix inside the waistband with a mag caddy. Now this style of holster has become wildly popular over probably the past decade. This specific one is a Gerber holster. Now these are awesome because they're extremely fast. It gives you everything right there in one package in the front. However, they are a little bit more bulky and it's definitely not considered the safest place to carry because it's aimed at your naughty bits pretty much all of the time. These are generally not going to be the most comfortable holsters to wear, depending on your body type. So if you've got a little tactical muffin top going on, a little extra poundage around that waistline, this just isn't gonna be the probably most comfortable holster for you. And it's likely going to show, or what we call print, a lot easier because your belly is gonna be pushing it out a little bit. Not a knock on anybody, but you really need to determine what style of carry you want. It's gonna fit your body type the best. And again, these are generally gonna have some form of concealment claw or concealment wedge, either that's attachable or built into it to kind of press the upper portion of that pistol and the pistol grip back into your body so you don't print as much and it's easier to conceal without other people noticing. Now that you know the style of carry, the positions, the different materials, the holster types in there, what about our safety, our quality, our finish, and all of the options when it comes to choosing a holster? Because there's a lot of different stuff to choose from on the market. Everything from concealment claws, to concealment wedges, to different colors. How do we choose and what do we look for? Starting with safety, the first thing I'm gonna say is always, always, always buy a holster that covers the trigger guard 100%. You don't want anything to be able to work its way down into the trigger guard because that can cause serious problems. There's all kinds of videos out there showing issues going on like that. So always get a good holster, hopefully one with some retention in it, whether it's adjustable, lockable, or clickable, that's going to completely cover that trigger so nothing bad can happen. 
The second thing for safety is adjustable retention. Get one that you can adjust, whether more or less retention, to suit your needs, to suit your carry style, and just to ensure that pistol's not gonna fly out of there. And last on safety, you need to periodically, monthly, if not more often, quality control check your holster. Make sure that none of the material's deforming, make sure it's not cracking, make sure the fasteners are still in there nice and tight, and double check that retention. That's only gonna keep you safe in the long run. And now on to quality, because this is where people lose their minds sometimes, because everybody thinks the one they bought is the best. What you're really gonna look for here is good quality fasteners, not a lot of those kind of rivet style things. You're gonna want ones that are obviously stainless steel or some kind of coated uh, fasteners that are not gonna rust on you. You're gonna want good quality material, whether it's leather or that Kydex. Generally, the holster company is gonna tell you what brand they're using or what the thickness they're using. Those are all gonna play into the quality of that holster. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is definitely the finish work. Are there rough edges? Are there cut marks on holsters you've seen from that brand before or reviews out there online? That's really gonna to go to tell you the finish work and the quality and kind of the care they took while making that. As far as options go, this is generally where they're gonna get you because do you want a different color? Do you want a concealment claw, a concealment wedge? Do you want different colored fasteners? Um, all of those things could cost a little bit more money. And generally the one that I would look at and maybe pay a little bit more for is not gonna be the color, it's going to be the clips. I want to make sure that the clips that are holding that either on my belt, whether it's a metal clip or a polymer clip or a utility clip, is gonna be the best one I can get because that's gonna keep the holster in your waistline. As far as the color goes and fastener colors and grommet colors, you can spend all the money you want but the one thing you might wanna look at upgrading is getting the good quality clips if they don't already come with it. And the last thing on options are, there are actually some holsters out there that are meant to be convertible. And what I mean by that is they can be worn with inside the waistband clips or you can unscrew those and actually put an outside the waistband paddle or even some form of like Safari Land QLS fork and lock it into a duty holster. There are companies that make those out there, which is a great option because it's gonna give you two holsters for one. A couple screws in the waistband, a couple screws off outside the waistband. Uh, those are out there, so if that's something you might be interested, there are several companies making those. Definitely something to look into. All right, so I know that was a lot. So how do you get some experience with this? One, watch some YouTube videos. Spend a little bit of time doing your research. Read the descriptions of the materials on the manufacturer's or the producer's website when it comes to the holster company. Go to your local store. A lot of guys in those stores will have some of the nicer holsters in there that they carry themselves. And they'll generally let you look at them and check them out. And you can really get a good idea of different brands and the quality that they are offering. And then of course, check with your friends, see what kind of holsters they are running and see if it's gonna fit not only your body type, but if it's gonna fit the quality needs you are looking for. And another way too is to just go down to the range when you're there and see what people are carrying out there on the range next to you, whether it's indoors, outdoors, or whatever. Um, generally, people out there have been pretty cool when I've asked to check something out. I don't know where you live, but around here in Arizona, people are generally pretty helpful when you're looking for something gear-wise. Now, when it comes to brands that I have personal experience with, there are several brands that I can recommend and say they are very good quality holsters. Just remember, good isn't cheap and cheap isn't good. If you're looking for a good quality holster, you can check out T1C, Tier 1 Concealment. You can check out T-Rex Arms. You can check out TXC. McKinetech makes a pretty good holster. Um, you can also check out Black Arc holsters. Very good quality stuff. They are expanding how many different models they are servicing. And then in kind of the more budget categories, Bravo Concealment actually does a really good job for a very respectable price. They do have limited models available but they're great holsters for definitely a lot less than other companies out there. And McKinetech is generally a little bit cheaper than some as well. And then if you're into the hybrid thing, Hidden Hybrid Holster is one that I have worn and tested a bunch. Good stuff there really just depends on what you are looking for. Now remember to check out flatlinefiberco.com and let me know your favorite color or item for the dump pouch giveaway. Leave that comment down below and I will pick a winner for you guys. And I am super curious to know what is your favorite holster brand out there because everybody seems to think the one they have is the best. You guys get out there on the range and have some fun. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We are about to pass a 100K on the channel here, which is thanks to all of you. Huge thank you to all of my Patreon. You guys are absolutely awesome. If you wanna support the channel in any way, you can check out the Patreon or check out the link down below for the swag store. 
Just got the fresh new hats in, and this is Johnny B's Drama Llama t-shirt from TriStar Trading. You guys stay safe, stay ready. I will see you guys on the next one.